Hello and welcome back. We are playing Victoria 3 as Japan. And last episode was quite a bit of an interesting one. We absolutely took off in terms of the economy. Um, trying to build into this deficit spend into specifically the increased government wages and uh, military wages that we had gotten from this cranking up SOL. Now the SOL about here we ran out of peasants and then it started getting up kind of precipitously uh, in this little dip we conquered Beijing and uh, this portion of Korea to try and help stem the bleeding uh, because if we take a look here you can just see the gold reserves just kind of we're just bleeding out and then right about here is when we conquered conquered them and we kind of got to a pretty comfortable place where we no longer needed to like we started adding construction these sorts of things where we no longer felt that we were like um kind of going to uh perhaps perish we got like within 20 million of our credit limit um and so this was a little bit scary and so it was just a very easy uh interesting episode despite there being like not really any wars like we took iraq something like this uh and we protected in a few boyos but now we're coming out really strong and there's an interesting phenomenon that i made a video on the video is probably out by now uh but i just wanted to point out that for government wages these government wages track what's norm called the normal wage which is the average wage of all your incorporated pops. We are about to incorporate here Beijing. After we incorporate Beijing, we will see the normal wage drop because once this is incorporated, the average wage of Beijing will be used to calculate the, uh, in addition to all of these Japanese provinces, will be used to calculate um, the normal wage. And since this is a SOL of uh, 13, an SOL, roughly speaking, can be used to help track wage, and the SOL of our other incorporated stuff is like 21, uh, we'll see a huge dip there. So this is kind of what's going on. Uh, we have a decent amount of infamy to work with. Let's double check uh, if our PMs are winding up on the military, because I know we swapped some stuff around. And so I just want to see if, nope, we're, we're all set with the military ready to go. And so I think what we want to do here is we want to find a decent war. I haven't put an enormous amount of thought into where we want to fight, other than we want to fight uh, specifically people we're damaging relations with. We definitely want to fight those, but none of them we can fight. And so I was thinking maybe Russia... I think this is what we were thinking as we ended the episode last time, uh, where we just, you know, maybe don't take a ton of states off of Russia, maybe don't go full infamy yet. I don't think we can afford to fight two great powers. I think when we were looking at Russia, the problem is they have an alliance with Germany. Uh, we have bad relations with these guys, with Austria, but Austria is not, we're really not going to be able to get a whole lot off of Austria that's useful. Um, there's... Let's see, France has a defensive pact. We could maybe fight France. And it looks like maybe we should be fighting the UK. The UK doesn't have any allies. Um, and I think what we can do with the UK specifically is just look to kind of grab Cameroon and Gabon. And then just like uh, they lose all their market access to the interior states here. And this will not be the like biggest in terms of infamy war. But what we can also do is force them to release British Raj. Uh, when we declare on them something like this uh let's just double check right here and come a look here we'll see that we have 4900 and what did they have 6400 so maybe this is a little premature this idea of uh going at them after them there and so maybe it's we just go into chill mode we could annex chile i believe uh if i'm not mistaken this is probably a lot of oh this isn't even that much infamy I think we do want to let them finish colonizing f first. That way no one else gets to jump in on the colonization. And so I think maybe we just take out on pause and we kind of just chill. Uh, we see this. We're making money now. Money moves, that is. Um, we did do some stuff in the interim to kind of affect that. But we're adding construction to kind of get rid of that. Uh, if we take a look and we just... Let's just track this and look at this at the same time so we see government wages are going up currently because we just finished a bunch of construction centers and then when we finish this incorporation here we'll see government wages go down because the normal wage is based on the average wage of all incorporated states which will include beijing after we finish incorporating it we will also see a dip in authority because we will be getting less authority from the forbidden city but this is okay this is not a big deal 14 days i'm so excited Somebody get ready. It's going to drop by about 50, or this is what it did with our other test, um, as far as this went. Uh, which is going to be... Uh, it's uh, it's interesting how like these mechanics can be very subtle. And now it's incorporated, so if we re-hover the tooltip, or wait until the Monday, so it's still 820. Gotta wait for Monday. 
now it's 776 okay and so this is a sharp decrease in our wages for our peoples and we're also incorporating them and we'll have incorporated them soon I suppose we could go just go after Xing again and this is probably let's take a look at the diplomacy and see when we have this up ah so they have this so if we declare neutrality on this we can just go into great Xing and I think we're kind of okay going high infamy we just don't really want to fight the UK right now but what we can do is we can maybe take a save. Uh, we're going to take a quick look who we can get in the customs union first. So we'll invite the Great Mongol State. Um, we will invite... Not Messina. Messina is already something else. And we will see who we can get into the customs union before we go bad boy mode. I think we'll invite these guys as well. We'll owe Brazil an obligation. Uh, because we're about to be a little bit naughty. Brazil joins, and Brazil is probably going to leave. They're gonna owe, we're going to owe them an obligation. This will mean we can't puppet them or something like this, but this is fine. And has the other guy accepted? Okay, the Great Mongol State has accepted. So what we will do is we'll come in here, we'll declare neutrality. And then we're going to take a save. And then we're going to go for some Xing territory, uh, which I think... I think what we really need now is actually just more pops. You know, our standard of living has climbed very, very, very high. Um, and this, as if the standard of living is not directly representative of your wages because it's being manipulated or affected by how much you tax, um, the more your taxes are, the higher your standard of living will be relative to your normal wage or your average wage. But what we can do is, I, I think with our SOL so high, it's indicative that we have so much industry that we just need more pops. And this is the fastest way to acquire more pops. And so we could go after shang -Zi, um, but I think we're going to go after some more uh, territory from uh, Great Xing here. shang -Zi would really be what we would want, though. Alternatively, we can just Dominion or Puppet this guy, look to play a little bit more small ball, which isn't terrible. I think they have some resources. Let's take a look. They don't have many pops, though, is the thing, but they do have gold and some other resources. But what we really want is the pops more than anything. The pops are really expensive on the infamy to uh, kind of accrue in. We could just go through Fujian and Jiangzi, and this is the highest pop uh, kind of route we could take here. Uh, and maybe that's the way to go. Hefei, Southern Anhui is the capital. Let's just take a quick look here as well. 4,900. I think they actually have a relatively strong military. 36. Hmm. just it's a very weird inflection point between i think i think in general i don't go full baddie fa uh fast enough and i think that this is what we do here um so we'll go for it i guess we'll conquer state fujian this will be a ton of infamy we'll get war reps as well now we can sway France to our side. They want to return Beijing, of course. We're gonna mobilize all generals and then activate the conscripts here because we have those conscripts set up to be pretty big. And we will come in like this. And then I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Korea is a subject of China. So what we will be able to do is we will be able to double war China uh, because following this, uh, we will just declare war on uh, Korea. Since they are tributary, China will get pulled in and we'll just take more provinces off of China. And so this is going to be potentially full bad boy mode. We did save before this, so if things get catastrophic or weird, uh, we can back out. But we'll probably also need a little bit of an ex expanded military. Uh, so we'll just put this in the queue. Well, we already have a little bit of expansion in the queue, but I think we want a little bit more. So we're going to just add five to all these. Well, let's add ten. Something like this. In kind of our home states. And we will be ready for this. And we will recruit another general in the Japan HQ. Got quite a few guys. And we will probably... Mm, we're going to recruit this guy and then fire him. Uh, just to try and get another roll on general that we maybe could like. Uh, this guy's actually decent. 
We, of course, do not like his IG. This guy is kind of okay. And so we'll put these guys in on a couple of these fronts. I think we'll put them both here and then look to... Actually, let's put them both here and then look to use our 78 for landing. Um, for landing over here, closer to the capital. I think we can designate it as an objective now. Yeah. So, Southern Anhui is the capital, so we'll try and land that. We actually might just land Fujian here. And then we'll put in more war goals as it gets closer to um, needing to see what's going on. I think we will just take states, though. Um, this is probably the fastest way to go about things, and is going to, um, I think, be pretty good here. This actually is a relatively good state, but we'll uh, probably not take it yet. Now, we do have a bunch of stuff in the queue. Hopefully, we can graduate the taxation. We do not. Electric arc process was researched. Uh, we'll take the... Ooh, uh, this is going to be a little bit uncomfortable. I think we can afford to do it. Um, but hopefully... So, what we're hoping... The thing we're... The only thing we're really concerned about now... Actually, well, I mean, there's more than one thing we're concerned about. But what we are concerned about is... We're concerned about a great power joining, and a great power that uh, would be quite large. And so this is, we do not want to swap over automobile production on everything. Uh, maybe we should uh, be doing this a little bit more intelligently. I don't think we have enough oil. Oh, we don't have telephones yet. Or we do, but not everywhere. That's what's going on. And we have a bunch of extra uh, bureaucracy at the moment. It's going to be one day, and then they're going to get over here. And hopefully we can dust this front up pretty quick to just kind of have focus on two fronts as we open up a few more. We see that we're doing pretty well, despite the taxes situation. Especially, we're going to have another decrease uh, in the normal wage when this gets finished is getting incorporated because the population, you see, is middling, which is lower than we're like 21 over there. Now, we don't want them to back down. If they back down, we might reload. We're going to have to add a bunch of these war goals to primary as well. But we don't want other great powers to join. I think we will now take this opportunity, uh, now that it's going to be kind of quick no matter what till we finish, we are going to finish adding the war goals as we would like, and we are going to put in Conquer State on some more territories, uh, specifically GXZ, which has the highest uh, population out of anyone, and then I think Southern Anhui is next, so we'll put in on that as well. And then we will make these all these war goals primary. And so we are turning an evil corner, an evil corner. We'll make these both primary, which makes them uncertain. So this war is likely to pop off. I think we will just put in more conquer states, which should uh, renew their... Now, which ones are we wanting to get? All right, so we can't get to, ooh, we can get to Hainan. So I guess we'll go for Hainan as well. Looking just kind of mainly focusing on pops. Um, and so now let's see if we can add another one. So we can add another one or we can make Hainan primary. It looks like the war is likely to pop off. And so we'll add another conquer state. And then if it doesn't pop off, this is uh, not the biggest deal. So, I guess we would like Shenjing, if this is amongst them. Tuva is kind of up into the... Tian Shan. I don't think these are, any of these are anything we can do anything with, actually. Shuzhou, maybe? I don't think... I think Shuzhou probably has an enormous pop, so it's not going to be gettable. I think all these over here are what uh, is gettable here. And uh, we can't liberate, we can't take treaty ports, we can re can't revoke a claim, we can't really conquer anything, we can't... Ooh, we could open them. We could go for Tibetan war reps. I think we'll just leave this here, as is, and just actually make this primary. 
uh, because we are like full born infamy anyways here. Um, we're over 100, so we'll unpause. We'll see. Everyone's going to start embargoing us, this type of thing. And so this will wreck our economy in this way. But um, hopefully no one else joins. If someone else joins, we might have to load and take a little bit of a different attitude towards how we're approaching it. And we get France joining. So, um, so maybe we can't do this nastiness with Fujian. Yeah, I don't. Hmm. I don't think we're quite strong enough to fight the two of them yet. I mean, we certainly would not have wanted to spend the last bit of infamy. We would have take, wanted to take some stuff off of France. Hmm. This is a bit interesting, though. We're at such a weird inflection point. I think we could probably enforce on them and then maybe capitulate to France. We certainly don't want to have spent the, the remaining three infamy, though. Thirteen infamy. Making stuff primary. I think we retry the same war, though. And what we do is we... Um, Rip however, how long it takes to load, man. So I think we, I think we want to, I mean, this is, I just don't like going the high infamy play, but I know, I understand it's like better. And we could really use the population and this is how you get the population. So we just go Fujian, Jiangz. Maybe we're okay with them backing down and we're just not going to go to 100 infamy yet. It's also going to break a huge amount of trade routes. But I think that we're kind of in decent shape to be able to combat that. I mean, maybe we go after something like Portugal. No, they don't have a lot of pops. What we really need is the populations. Hmm. This is... This is not uh, necessarily like a threshold I'm good at. Now, wait, why can't we start a play with great shape? Okay, all right, here we go. So, we will go after Fujian again. And Jiangz. And. Uh, we will just let these war goals sit and see who wants to join and. I think we can fight France, uh, but we will have to kind of make it, uh, oops. we're gonna recruit fire that guy again. We get an Intelligentsia guy this time. I think we'll use this guy to do the landing. So we'll keep him at home for now. I think one of these guys had a good defensive stats. It was this guy, so we'll leave this guy at home to protect him against landings. We'll stack this front up more than the others. And we will see. If they back down from this, I think we're okay with this. We will get refunded partially. We will not go up to, you know, the 100 infamy threshold. We get an embargo from Russia. That's going to hurt them a lot too. But they are a big portion of our economy in terms of exports and imports. But this is going to be this is going to be okay. This will be a transitionary type of play. Uh, we can get them... We could sway them if we offered them a treaty port. Doesn't make too big a difference to us, I suppose. If they back down, why don't we also make war reps primary? And we would be happy with just Fujian, and then we will kind of be able to do something else that's going to be powerful while picking up Shing war reps. Electric arc process is required. Uh, yes, we did have this whole debacle again. We don't want to swap all those over yet. We do want to swap over to this, and to this, and to this. The labor-saving PMs at this point are extremely good. 
Don't think we can afford to go all house door plastics. Taxation is theft, you're telling me. It is the same event as before. We're gonna check, pick the same option. And we are kind of just waiting to see what things happen in terms of them backing down or not. I think we're also okay just, you know, taking these two things out and just being in very good shape after that to maybe fight great powers. Because what we can do is in South China, we can build up like 200 battalions and they'd be relatively cheap. Um, and so maybe we'll do something like that. Now we have the two generals at home. We have the 70 stack at home, which we are gonna use to land over here. And I think we'll designate again the strategic objective of the capital and so we will be able to next war we go into them on so now it's just escalating and so if they back down we'll get a refund on this if not we will be pretty uh high infamy but we're not at the hundred so we're not just getting the our guts embargoed everywhere and so it gives us a little bit of opportunity to prepare to fight the great powers um we'll see if they back down here though Certainly don't mind if they do, certainly don't mind if they don't, so I think we're... Alright, we have ourselves a war, so we will put in a landing... ...here... ...with the 75 stack of Kojo. And I think we'll also land with this guy, uh, Sukinori... ...on the same spot. Which should be pretty successful. Destroyer warfare is complete. Ooh, no one's on that front. Well, we'll move someone over. It looks like China just... They just can't afford... They... I don't know. They are struggling because they are currently also fighting Russia. Oh, we... This also explains a lot. Uh, we'll recruit that guy for now, I guess. And the bigoted guy. We will promote him. He is a communist, notably. Uh, and we will probably go Council Republic if we're going full bad guys. So just something to keep in mind. That council, the drawbacks of Council Republic largely are going to disappear uh, as you... Um, if everyone hates your guts anyways. So this is probably what we'll do. And our economy is kind of getting to the point where it is maybe close to large enough for this to make a difference. Let's see if we can 51 any sort of building in either of these places that's not currently 51. So this is... We'll add up in here. To make sure we're getting the economies of scale throughput bonus, we'll add a couple of rails as well. Um, let's see, how are we doing here? We have a bunch of extra infrastructure and we have all these complete. I think we'll add a few more electrical industries because we're gonna be looking to swap these over. We'll put these on auto expand, just add a little bit of a smattering of them. We'll be in good shape. And then we will kind of just take a look at our market and how prices are affected. So hardwood is affected by the fact that Russia embargoed us. We'll try and get an import on, on that hardwood, but we will also try and, ooh, we're already, we're already utilizing everything. Running out of hardwood is a very common problem. It happens when you get older. But yeah, also when we are, we had a pretty big dip in literacy when we incorporated Beijing. So there's that as well. Looks like we're in good shape here, though. The war is kind of cranking up pretty nicely. We get Wargaming unlocked, which is going to be good for fighting. And we are thinking, generally speaking, that we are going to kind of be switching to a very fight-oriented thing. So maybe we're going to get Land and Craft. And then after landing craft, look to get NCO training with the understanding that man oh man, we're gonna have to fight a lot of great powers, I think. And so we might as well uh, get ready for that. Uh, mnemonic tools is actually kind of appealing because you know it gives you the construction sector building throughput, which is a modifier we would be pretty much happy with right now. But also it gives us this hardwood output. Let's see if we are, uh, we have a huge investment pool. So let's go mnemonic tools. So this way, it'll increase the amount of construction goods and also construction output without ex uh, increasing government wages from the construction sectors. And this will be pretty good because we have an investment pool that's pretty big, uh, that's already accumulated a lot of funds. And we do have a decent amount of infamy here, but it's not, um, it's not so, so much. It's it's enough that uh, we are not going to, I think, bankroll anyone anymore because we are notorious. We're not going to protect her at anyone. So we're going to stop all of our bankrolls. 
as well. We are done with this. We will likely just want to conquer Shang Zi at some point. So we will just stop bankrolling everyone. The time of this is over. We have some people in our customs union still. This is going to uh, kind of help out quite a bit. But they are wary. They are likely to leave in the near-ish future. And this is kind of how things are going to shake out for us. This boyo. Oh yes. We wanted him at home. That's right. But it looks like we're going to push into the capital pretty quick here. And so we're going to get a quick enforcement. I'm pretty happy with this war. Um, you know, just getting two provinces is going to make a big deal for kind of tamping down our SOL and reducing the cost of labor in our market. Because again, this problem is starting to rear its head again after we have resolved it a little bit. You know, we are going to see the government wages start to creep back up in the military wages. And this will help us out a lot. Also, I'm planning on putting, you know, a sizable chunk of... Um, military down here as well uh which will hopefully give us put us in between this and also finishing wargaming i think we'll be in a much better spot to maybe um, i think we'll just do this one we'll be in a much better spot also once we get proportional taxation we'll be in a much better spot to fight great powers and you know right now we have 370 battalions we'll go up to like 500 battalions something like this after this happens and then we will be significantly stronger than anyone else i think we're also going to need quite a bit of a navy so let's take a look i think we're expanding it in beijing already so let's see about recruiting an admiral here yes we have had it in here unfortunately they're all buddhist monks which is not exactly what we want but this guy will do for now We'll promote him. And we have enough of a navy to triple land a place if we want to. Between a 75, a 30, and a 40. And we could also like protect some of our, our supply lines and stuff like this as well. We might want a little bit more navy. I'm not sure exactly. Um, a little bit tough to say. Let's come in and let's try and look for if we can hit some economies of scale bonuses in places that are not... Uh, sorry, that are close-ish. Uh, Zambia, Zambezia? You know, we're actually floating a decent amount of excess authority right here, so why don't we go to Zambezia and see how expensive this corporation is. It's not too bad. It's gonna take 21 years. It's not ideal, but we'll also, this is 35, 40, 41, 51. We just can't bear to see, you know, one, two, three, four. We really want to get things to 51. I think there's not enough people in Hokkaido, so that's actually... We might undo that. Nezh we incorporated way earlier. Oh, they're really migrating to Hokkaido. So I guess we'll, we're will we going to be okay with this. And then let's take a look. We'll continue... We'll just let it be unpaused because I don't think we need to be paying too close attention. But we're looking for places somewhat close to 51 that are incorporated. And then we're going to crank them up uh, to 51... Uh, that way we have the maximum economies of scale throughput bonus in these places. 31, 41, 51. And that way we can kind of try and cook a little bit. Oh, this is a travesty. 45, 51. Paper is generally like not one you build super high, so it is what it is. Hokkaido, we're also crank up there in Hokkaido. Uh, Ryuku Islands... 41, 51. And the auto queue will handle a lot of the infrastructure. And also, we recently swapped over from electric railways, so we should be in relatively good shape. Although the Ryuku Islands almost certainly need some more. Um, why don't we add like five there? And then the Ryuku Islands, we are going to add some more infrastructure. We're actually going to check the infrastructure. Okay, they're in a decent spot. But we're going to add some more at the front as well as a port although our need for ports is going to start going down as we go like full infamy mode they're at six or they're at 7.6 they're likely to kind of be done with this relatively soon and um then we can declare war on korea and fight great Xing again if we want or we can do kind of a smaller war and not go over 100 infamy. We'll just look to find a war where we can maybe small ball a little bit. Um, something like this. A significant war. Like, so a good example would be integrating Iraq would be good. Although I don't think we 
I don't think our truce is close to up with them. But we could look to integrate, but that's not our subject. Otherwise, that would be fantastic. Who is... Are you subjugating Persia? No, you're not. Let's see. We have a truce until 10. So this is not going to quite work out. We could go after shang uh, We could just go after Korea immediately post. Let's move some of these smaller guys over here. Because there is some weird front splitting and stuff going on here. It looks like the bigger boys have this handled. We'll also want to switch on to Wargaming. Oil's the future. I think we're going to start the secondary PM adjustment now, actually. We'll put on Siege Artillery. This will decrease their combat effectiveness. But I think it's not going to be a problem. Famous last words. And then this way we're in a better position to fight a GP later if that's what we feel like we need to do. We will put that on Siege as well. Splitters. Damn splitters. I don't think we could afford that, so we're going to just do this for now. It would be one thing if it was decreased taxes, but I believe we are paying. So we're still, money's still being extracted from the pops for this. You guys can give up anytime you'd like. It looks like they're willing to give up, so we will just put that in there. And then we're going to take a look where we have insufficient tax capacity. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to use our handy dandy smacky wacky button to reset the PMs here. Um, so that they're the same. And then we're going to incorporate these because these are only five year incorporations for us. So we're going to need to find some more bureaucracy as well. So we're going to take a look. Where do we have insufficient tax capacity? In Yang Xiao. So we're going to swap these to telephone switchboards. Hokkaido which doesn't even have a government administration. We'll put one in on telephone switchboards. And we're looking to get all of this while also decreasing this tax uh, problem we've had for a while. So we'll add a couple more there. Chubu. We'll swap Chubu over. Ryuku Islands, I think we already took a look at. No, we'll add a couple. Shukogu. We'll swap you over to telephone switchboards. Uh, Shikoku. We'll swap you over, and you're gonna we're gonna add a, like five of these, and then Beijing. We will also swap over, and then Beijing might be one of the few places we still have not enough tax capacity. So we're gonna add a six on the back of this. We just gotta wait for a lot of these to employ up. Uh, now that we've switched to telephone switchboards, and it should kind of help things out a bit and notice we're up to around 3k so we can comfortably incorporate this as well or just kidding we could uncomfortably incorporate it uh, but now we have to think turn our sights on another war uh, really wish we could incorporate Iraq. We do want their natural resources. Let's take a quick look just hover this and see who our puppets are. Now we could It would be very easy to just incorporate Chile here. I think they are colonizing is the thing. Yeah, and we don't want to lose access to their colonization uh, exclusivity. Uh, but I think we just want to puppet this guy, actually. We'll take a save and we'll go after those guys. Uh, that seems like a fairly strong puppet. It'll give us a land front with Russia for later, which I think is going to be pretty useful. Because Russia has a ton of resources, and resources are going to be what is lacking when we get embargoed. And so we can just come in and do this, and then we can puppet these guys. Yes. And then we'll add war reps. We don't really want the war reps, but this way they are more likely to back down. And we can mobilize, I don't know, I guess the 75 stack, because that's who we'll use to land them. And then we'll take a look at, are we overflowing? Uh, so we do have some, we have some guys here already. And we did want to expand the military here. We did swap over the PMs. You have six barracks here. So we'll switch these up to 10 each. And then I think we'll just full out this naval base. We will want that eventually. 
and then this way we're kind of just doing things a little bit slow we can add a bunch of you know more military very very quickly as needed and once we get these guys incorporated it of course will help to decrease the price of our government wages which have come back up um which because we've got more <laughs> we've got a lot more government workers and then also these areas are going to have super negative migration as they just all move over to japan uh for the quick labor so let's incorporate you let's wait and not get ahead of ourselves let's do that there's a decent amount of resources here, but I'm kind of keen on getting the front with Russia. You know what? There's a new territory I think that is actually kind of sleeper OP to take, and that's Montenegro. So that way you have, you know, a land border with Austria. Uh, this way you can trade with them better, but for us it might be useful uh, for making... being prepared to kind of fight uh, these GPs uh, in a little bit of... when we kind of go bad boy mode. This is going to be nice for us. Let's take a quick look at our... Uh, no, our colonies are kind of going as fast as they can. In fact, what we will do is we will start decreasing this down all the way. It's going to take us quite a long time to decrease all the way, but it looks like the colonization race game is kind of over, and so we will be getting refunded huge amounts of bureaucracy as we're doing this, so we can afford to incorporate a whole lot more, remembering that we can kind of pick a fight with China anytime we want by picking a fight with Korea, if I'm not mistaken... So let's just double check this. It might be the case that we cannot uh, do a return state. Uh, we can't do a return state when we have a truce with Great Xing. This is fine though. We got really what we wanted from Great Xing, which is another 50 million people in our country. You know, huge big up here. We unlocked the best PM in the game. Take a look, everyone. Skyscraper, airship mooring pool. Give me that. Give me that Zeppelin. Where is it? Show me the Zeppelin. Oh, there it is. Oh, there's like five of them. Give me that Zeppelin. All right. We have a war. <laughs> we have a war we're fighting. I think we'll just land them with a couple guys. Uh, we're going to land with two because the fronts are going to split anyways. Uh... Something like this. It should be more than enough to overpower these guys. And we're kind of stuck in a little bit of a war. But we are also, you know, our PMs are adjusting. Our secondary PMs. We don't really want to fight a great power immediately. And this is cranking up big, big high. And so we don't want to... By keeping this under 100, we don't nuke all of our trade routes. All of our trade routes will start getting nuked when that happens. And I think perhaps we want to get on graduated taxation first. And then that way we can start going to Council Republic before we go evil. I mean, before we free people from their bondage. I think we might also want to go Universal Suffrage and then Council Republic. Let's see the tick. Ooh, baby. Let's go. Um, off the back of that, we will decrease taxes, which should stimmy the economy, or help to stimmy the economy. We see we are making it enough more money for this to, like, be net positive. And then we're going to try and go uh, universal suffrage. And we're going universal suffrage because the Council Republic is not a super easy pass right now anyways. We are getting a landing in. And we are getting it in, as it were. And we can kind of afford this now, but not super quite. Not yet quite. Let's take a look here. We are going to want these on telephone switchboards when they're incorporated anyways. And these as well. So we'll just swap, swap them onto telephone switchboards. That way we can afford this incorporation, which is going to incorporate 25 million. Again, really depressing the normal wage by a lot, which is going to allow us to pop off. Also, we are getting cheaper labor in our market because we have this dip again. And so we're just kind of after the pops. I think that this is kind of a... this. My understanding is that event doesn't do anything really. And so you just take the one that doesn't give you uh, penalties or whatever. I guess maybe we could speed this along by landing again. With this 20 stack that's now not doing anything. We see the auto queue constructing a lot of electricity, so let's see about increasing it ourselves. I think Sakhalin has some problems, actually. Are you still having infrastructure? Ooh, you've managed to solve the infrastructure problems. Fantastic. 
let's maybe put in some industries here, yes? Because we are incorporating it anyways. The labor here is cheap. And so we'll just come in and 51 it. We don't mind regulatory bodies, but this is going to be expensive. Oh, it's not as bad as I thought. We got path to socialism, I guess. The People's Revolution. Let's see what we need in order to get the People's Revolution to fire. We have to go Council Republic, and it has to be true for five years. Okay. We were planning on going Council Republic anyways, and so this will be pretty good. Just because we we're going to nuke all of our trade routes anyways once we go full baddie mode. I'm not sure exactly what war we want that is particularly big, other than maybe puppeting someone who's huge. So, like, puppeting Spain, maybe, would be a decent war. This sort of thing. Yeah, we get the full enforcement on them here. And we did start uh, decreasing this institution early, but it's not going to be until, you know, it's going to be a while until we get refunded our uh, bureaucracy. We do... We are making money, and we kind of don't want to be doing that. Uh, we wanted to deficit spend, so I guess we're just going to do some of this action. I'm adding 10, and then 1, 2, 3... Four and Hail Nez Ryuku Islands, Hokkaido can maybe go East Borneo is incorporated, could it incorporate that? Jing Z, Fujian, one, two, three. Get up to I'm not sure if that'll quite kick us up to 4K construction, but we kinda wanna move in that direction. So we'll just put the rest of these at the front of the queue, and there's some at the back of the queue. And this will increase demand. It stimulates our economy as well. I think this is important to note that the construction centers do stimulate the economy as well. We get universal suffrage here too. Big nice. Uh, let's see, you are pacifists, but these guys are anarchists. So we can go council republic, or we can attempt to. So let's take a look at what that would look like in terms of... Yeah, so the problem is it radicalizes everyone. But next election, when the next election rolls around, because we're on universal suffrage, we're going to juice up some boyos a little bit. And the trade unionists will become more powerful. Their bonus is the best bonus. And also, hopefully, maybe eventually one of them will die and we will get the type of leader we need to kind of have a united front on passing that. I don't think we're going to crack down on the agrarian party because they are our boys. do have to kind of make it in here why don't we come in here and designate this as the objective because that is the capital looks like we are floating that way anyway though we are have a bit of a negative thing here so we'll just come in and we'll get rid of that uh stimmies our economy a little bit by decreasing the taxes we want to be losing a little bit of money and so we're moving in that direction quite along uh let's see about you're already on switchboards hmm we're going to see where we have insufficient tax capacity. It's in here. Yang Xiao. Which is already on switchboards, but we'll add another six of these. And then we'll find another place. Uh, Shikoku is the next highest. Which I'm guessing is already on switchboards, but we'll add another seven of these. And this will deal with this. And this will probably be the last time in a while we need to deal with that. So we'll just take one of these boyos and we'll move them over. But this will be nice. We finished colonizing Botswana. Let's take a look, make sure that our colonization is going. It is. It's going to be a little bit slower on this, but we are more concerned with the refunding the bureaucracy at this point. Yeah, things are coming along super, super nice. Just look at this. Beautiful. Really crank it up. <laughs> the economy here is now huge, uh, which is kind of how it does. It do be like that. Uh, notably, we are going to be using them for conscripts. Why don't we ready the other Chinese territories for the conscripts? Which is something I didn't think of, but I think is what we want. Because I think we're going to be conscripting out of here quite a bit. And this way the PMs are nice and ready uh, for when we go kind of the full baddie. 
We just need to touch in there. We just need to touch. And then they'll say, nope, no thank you, we didn't mean it. Ah, uh, the GDP is approaching a bill. Which is gonna be cool. I mean, I've said quite nice a lot, but a lot of this is quite nice. And so, there's all that. We're about to pop an election, which is also going to be, as it were, quite nice. Although it looks like the, uh, oh, the Common People's Party, it's split up. Uh, we really would like these guys to be um, communist of some sort, but unfortunately they're pacifist. Um, but this is okay. They are going to gain a walloping amount of clout, so hopefully their bonus is doubled. We do not mind the agrarian party really ticking on up, so we'll take that. We take those. Although, yeah, I, I'm not sure that was correct. Just trying to click through events kind of quickly. So, the National Citizens Line. We'll reform the government and see what we can do. <sighs> this is currently legitimate enough. We could get the petite bourgeoisie in Gov if we wanted. Um, I don't think we wanted. Uh, I think we do want to go for compulsory primary school, though. Yeah, this seems good. So, let's do this. We're losing a little bit of money, this is okay. We're gonna be losing a little bit more soon. Mnemonic Tools is gonna help out with the fact that, man oh man, this was expensive. It's come down a little bit. We still have trade routes though, and we're gonna lose those. We're gonna lose a lot of those, which is gonna be unfortunate, but it is what it is. We puppet Yakutia, and we get their war reps. I think we would want to go for Iraq next. Uh, we have negative relations with Persia, but we can't puppet them. Why? Ah, uh, because we have this little thing. Okay. A Yakutia. Let's take a look. They have some coal. They have coal and gold. Not too, too much. But we kind of more appreciate the fronts. I think before we go full batty, we're also going to annex Montenegro here. We're going to save and see if we can get Montenegro. We decrease colonial investment, which of course spikes up uh, the amount of bureaucracy we have. We also have all those bureaucratic administrations finishing, so we can try and increase other institutions as well. I don't think we need law enforcement, but law enforcement would be okay. Let's get workplace safety office up. And let's also, what we're going to do is we're going to try and 51 some gov admins that are close to 51 but not there. We're going to put that in the back of the queue in Beijing. That's going to handle things for Beijing for quite a while. We are going to enforce pretty quick over here. And this is almost the end of the colonization game here. Everything has been colonized. Uh, notably, very happy to have gotten Eastern Mali. Uh, maybe we can incorporate this right now. No, we actively don't want to incorporate this, actually, because the throughput bonus from Colonial Exploitation applies to this building. We get mnemonic tools, which is going to be pretty good for the hardwood output, right? And the construction center output, because now our investment pool is draining and we get above 4k off the back of it. So, big ups. Is it going to go up even more? Yeah, 4300. I think it might have been 4k before. I'm not sure, but this is draining. We want this to be draining. That is going to be really good. And now I think we just go straight mill tech. Um, I'm not sure what we do first. I think we're going to want landing craft. Uh, anyways, and then we can go NCO training afterwards. And this will be... Uh, this will be good. Now we could think about increasing the uni unis back up as well. We did delete a lot of them when we kind of suffered that pain. But I think with us incorporating these two as well, we're going to be pretty good on the pop front for a while, you know? And I think that maybe we can afford the unis to be back up and that this will help and then we can always just delete them again. So I'm going to add another 15 here. At the back of the queue, so this will be fine. We're also going to maybe just... Right now we're kind of... If an industry is really high, built pretty high, and is not incorporated. This is something we're looking for. So for Guinea, we're going to take a look at Guinea here. And we're going to actually incorporate Guinea. And we're going to increase this tooling workshop and put it on auto expand so that we get the economies of scale bonus and we slowly incorporate them. And we're going to start to look for more and more of those spots to go for. That way we're getting the full taxes from these people as well. 
and we're also applying our institutions to them and we are also using them to decrease the normal wage slightly because they will be kind of profitable in those places by now these guys are rebellious now we are going to enforce on these soon and then we will probably call it an episode i think Looking to make episodes a little bit shorter and to try and put timestamps in the episodes. This one will probably have timestamps, but it seems to be a very common request. Uh, but it does take me maybe 20 to 20, 20 to 30% more time per video in order to put timestamps in. And so if I make the videos 20, if I make them like 20% shorter, this seems like a, a reasonable trade-off. It of course means we can go through plays much slower, but okay, there's trade-offs. We'll see where we have infra, and we'll just add a bunch where we have some infra. And we definitely want to max these out. The Dutch flu. I hope it doesn't reach Japan. Ragged schools. Huh. We'll take this enactment chance. Now, let's see here. We will increase this glass orc up to 51. 40, 51. And here we will call it an episode, although we love to see a devout scandal at the end. Uh, this episode, what we've done is we've started to go a little bit infamous, not fully infamous yet, uh, fighting Great Shing, mainly taking them for more pops, which I think is going to, I think our problem was not fully solved, although it was quite solved. And now, you know, we also have passed the 1 billion GDP threshold, which feels pretty good. The economy is really, really cranking up. I'm feeling very good about, you know, being able to fight multiple great powers now. Perhaps we have a battalions of, you know, uh, what is this, 6,000 uh, army projection? And I think that, if I'm not mistaken, the number one power, Great Britain, uh, has about that much. I think they might have a little bit more now, uh, but nope, we're 6,687, and we have 6,664, so they have 20 more power projection. But what we're about to do here is we're about to slap down uh, enough to bring us up to 700 battalions, I think. No, 500 battalions, after which we will be in really good shape to fight these guys, especially with, you know, NCO training on the horizon. And so we maybe want, we're going to want to find, an, find another war that's like, we're going to want to find a, I think we're going to take this as our small ball war. We're going to take Montenegro for the strategic reasoning. Uh, of being right next to Austria. And then after that, I think we're just gonna go for an absolute savage, huge war. Like maybe taking a whole bunch of states off the US, I don't know. Maybe busting up Russia, something like this. Just taking a bunch of Russian states, just like drawing a line from here all the way into like Ural and Perm. These territories are very good, but yeah, really just popping off 1 billion GDP, adding a bunch of people to, adding a bunch of pop um, to try and make our labor way more efficient, this sort of thing, and we're just cranking out. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and have a good one.